Yeah. Say sorry. <laughs> Would you shut the fuck up? All right, go. Uh, so welcome to another episode of The Intellectuals. And we're going to start off the episode very simple. Is I like to ask Adam what he did during the week. Because we, we see each other only once a week. And I know you get into a lot of misadventures. And I like to hear about that. A lot of trouble, many would say. You do yeah. get into a lot of trouble. Predicaments. So I will be honest. So and, how was your week? You had you interviews some last week. I did, I did. I never thought of myself as a troublemaker. But I think I'm more in the case where trouble kind of falls onto my plate. It doesn't work that way. <laughs> so you like eating trouble. Okay. I'll tell you what, when a person is naive and they don't really see things coming, you know, I, I, I'm going to give you a perfect example. You guys remember the show Star Trek, right? Shields up. So if somebody attacks us, we're, we're, we're not prone, right? We right. have our shields up. So your shield I up? find in meta- metaphor, you do look like a tortoise. my shields are not always up and I don't see stuff and oh no, too late. <laughs> I'm being attacked. My shields are not up. speaking, so. Uh, no, but I'll answer your question. Uh, it's been more of the same, I guess you could say. Still, uh, still having interviews. Um, I'm well. Let me put it this way: I'm not some uh, glamorous person that uh, I don't know goes to uh, <laughs> clubs and what have you. I, I lead a pretty li- simple lifestyle at the moment. So, not that I don't want to answer any more than this, but there's only so much. Uh, so your week was so boring. So your week. <laughs> how did the uh, interviews go? Did you find any people? You're like, oh, I think I'm getting this job. Uh, that will be up to, well, let me put it this way. No, it I know would it'll be, be up nice to them. if you could read your employer's mind, but I did the best I could to present myself. You did the best you could to manner, read their mind. In an appealing manner so that they, so that the way that I present myself appeals to them. And I'm hoping I get a call back. Nice. You became very appealing to them. Yeah. One thing that I, I'm pretty sure falls under the general heading of common sense. If you have an interview, it's always a good idea to ask. So can you please let me know, uh, how much time from now you're going to let me know if you would like to include me as a person that you're going to hire. If you said it like that. Not in those words, but when you make your decision. If, if Can you, you let me know how long it's going to take you to come to a decision? Because obviously if I would make, come to a decision, I would have already come up to a decision. The decision would have been for you to hire me because I'm such a good employee, yeah. okay? I'm going to say something funny, actually. I wish I could say, I, I want to overrule the employer. You hire me. I don't care what you have to say. Hire me. <laughs> what was the last job that you interviewed for? Uh, insurance company. Oh yeah, I, eh. uh, there was that, uh, and there was, was, was hold the on, there was that, and there was that company that did the, the third party co- um, the, that did the uh, accounts for Telus Mobility. Oh yeah, both suck. Um, you know what you need though. You know what you could do. Are you good at data entry? I'm not bad. Hmm. Hmm. Yeah, I had a few. Uh, there were a few places like that as well. I feel like you'd sit there and enter data. It seems like it's right up your alley. There's another company I totally forgot. Uh, here's an interesting story. So there are some companies actually where you don't <coughs> actually speak to a person. It's all done via recording. What? For some reason, my my phone just couldn't record. There was a, there was an issue with the phone, so I sent them an email and they said, "Okay, if you're still stuck, call us." <laughs> my phone is a little old, so maybe that's why. I don't know. I'm not going to comment on why it didn't work. It just didn't work. You're supposed to press a button. It's supposed to audio record you or record you, and then they look at your interview is basically in the recorded form. What? That's the first time I hear about this. I don't know the fuck he's talking about, but I believe. Him. Who, who? What? Okay, Where? so when? you go on a website. You say, well, they know who you are. They, they send you a link. And in that link, they say, they ask you seven questions. Tell me something about yourself, your values, whatever, whatever. You press a button and you click a button that says record. And they, you have, I think, 90 seconds to answer the question as best as you can. Then you, go on, you press hit enter and you go to the second part. There were seven parts to this. But for whatever reason, the record button didn't work. So they have no data on me. That's the weirdest form of interview I've ever seen in my life. They had that at uh, Renault Depot, now that I think about it. Or Rona, whatever, so I don't know. Renault Depot? You applied for Rona? Yes. What do you know about construction or landscaping? Well, what do you know about well, escaping beginner, construction sites? Only beginner information. Uh, okay. Yeah, data entry. I, uh, yeah, we could look for a job for him like that. I, I, I would trust him, but at the same time, I never know with this guy. He could... Yeah. Okay, guys, I don't really want to, uh, what's the word? So, I, I could think of a better term, but let me please share my thought with you. I don't want to chastise somebody like Guido. The guy goes all the way to British Columbia. He admits on air, there's a reason I'm talking about it. He admits on air that, you know, he's got a drinking problem. He goes to get therapy. How come when it comes to him, according to my opinion at least, people are not that worried about him getting a job? But when it comes to me, <laughs> all these red flags go up. Do you understand why I'm saying this? No, we're not worried we're about not you. We're not worried about you. And also, he. We're just asking how it's going. Yeah, we just asked how it's going. And also, in comparison, he did, at least in the time that you haven't <clears throat> kept a job, he did keep jobs. And he has a skill, like pizza making. Like, he has a yeah. skill. Yeah. You don't have a skill 
that you can use. You're like, this is the Adam skill. Have you developed any skills? Well, guys, you are, I don't know if you're realizing this, but when I worked for my father, I had, uh, I had bookkeeping. I had to do his books. Yeah, and then the company went bankrupt and the nothing government. nothing to do with me, though. That's what you're saying. <laughs> that's what the bookkeeper well, guys, of a company that went bankrupt to would my say. Rationale. My father was the owner of the company. He was the one who, like, dotted, as they say, he dotted the I's and crossed the T's. I gave him the information. He's the one who go ahead and made the final reports. So I hope that serves as a, as as a rational thought in terms of the fact that I don't know. I feel problems like, were at his end. I he was feel, the feel like you ruined I your father's life. I, f- I feel like Adam had a major hand in in destroying his father's business. So as if yeah. I I've said, as if I just said nothing. He's the one who's dealing with the government and and GS, uh, excuse me and in, in th- investment tax credits that are worth hundreds. And of who thousands gave of him dollars. that information? I had nothing to do with that. That was but you his gave own him, personal. But you did bookkeeping. I just told you. GST, QST, filling out payroll reports. Okay, we have to. I'm sure you know you have to give the government X amount of dollars based on what your incomes are. Okay, guys, how about this? Like- yes and no. Very, very delicate operations like making applications to the government for hundreds of thousands of dollars. I'm not joking. We would receive a quarter million dollars at one point, right? That I didn't touch that. Okay, that was very delicate. Making a report, okay, we our income was uh, whatever, our salaries were X amount of dollars and we have to pay the, all, all the income taxes. I'm sure you know what I'm talking about, federal income tax, provincial income tax. That's not, uh, there was no problem with that, okay? What kind of scams are you currently a, up to? I have a question. Go ahead. I just thought of something. Um, did your father get sick before the business went bad or after? Sadly, it was around the same time. Okay, he was teetering between sick and healthy when this shit happened, okay? So after? He wasn't. When he got really sick. So, so when did the business go really bad? And then when did he really get sick? So the business... So let me explain this. When you get a letter from the government that says, we are now auditing you, okay? Mm-hmm. If my father had been in tip-top health, he would have he would have served them their, their, their papers, given them what they needed, and they would have they could have gone and screwed themselves. But sadly... Um, okay. There's another variable that I have to introduce, okay? You may be inquired, you may be inclined to ask yourself the question, why did they audit us? Oh, okay? would I be inclined? Okay. <laughs> so I have a feeling, I, I can't give you a firm answer, but I'd like to tell you what my common sense tells me. He was already not fully in within his, his mental capacities. And stuff that he obviously did for years and years, like make reports, they were sloppy. Okay, so it was reflected of the fact that his health was already Hey, let me teetering. ask you the last week, because I don't want to talk about your father's teetering uh, okay. <laughs> health due to your misappropriation of funds and such. <laughs> Last week, what did you do apart from these interviews? You must have lived the week as well. Well. Um, or did you just kind of like float by? Yeah, like listen, what do you do? I, 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 there are things that I do, but I don't, like I don't what? have to share that with the public here, you know? <laughs> you don't have to, but it would be cool if you did. Yeah, <laughs> we talk about our lives here. Uh, people are curious like yeah, what does Adam fine. do I'm, I'm what home, is a typical I'm home most of the time what people want to get to but know but what you? do you do at home you can't just you just sit and look at a wall go on the internet I watch video. okay you know what guys I, I got something educational okay nice. never mind people's opinions I invite any any listeners to right now go on go on uh, Google and type in Pleasant Green this guy he works with a team of people he basically is there to help people who have been scammed. There's all kinds of scams. There's inheritance scams. There's lotto scams, airline ticket scams. I've got a good story to share. There are actually a, there was actually a company. You figure if you buy an airline ticket, right? You're safe, right? You go to Delta.com that you're not being scammed. There was know, a I saw, company. I saw, did you see the, the lady pilot? You saw what happened? No. This lady showed up late. She was supposed to be the pilot, but she came in like street clothes. People were like, what the fuck's going on? And she showed up like late too. And then she gets on the mic. She goes, whoever's complaining about me, you're going to see you're wrong. The whole flight doesn't care. She goes, do you guys mind if I take control of the, uh, if I pilot this plane? And they're like, yeah, we do. And it's like, oh, you want me to go put on my cute uniform? And then they're like, no, no, you're just acting weird. So get the fuck off this plane. And then he's like, if you don't want me to fly the plane, you can get off the plane. Then everyone left the plane and they had to kick her off too. They refused no to pilot plane. Yeah, was, lady was pilot. she an actually wow. pilot? Yeah, yeah she was the pilot. pilot. She showed up late and it's like, she's just a uh, fucking asshole. She was giving wow. a whole speech. She got political. People were like, yo, shut the fuck up. We don't want you to fly this wow. plane. You're clearly insane. <sighs> okay. Yo, and everyone just dipped. 
Everyone's so like, me, yo, men and women are like, yo, I'm not so dying today. Let me, finish, <laughs> let me finish my story, please. So there was a company on the internet. Jesus that, Christ, bro. That allegedly acted as a third party. Uh, we're calling you to let you know, ma'am. We're, we, my name is so and so from oh Delta. Oh my god, he's gonna talk about fucking scams again. It's gonna be brief. And uh, okay, we're we need your credit card information. We're gonna be rerouting your flight to another flight uh, tomorrow. It's gonna cost you hundred dollars. Can I have your credit card number? So listen to this. This guy had to go and this guy did his due diligence. This was a company that just took your money. It made it look like you were being rebooked on your Delta flight, but it was actually a company that pocketed your money. That's, How a, did that's they know? a very interesting scam. Well, the guys are pro. The guys. Are I once scientists. booked a ticket where I thought I'm like, ah, oh, I'm getting scammed. It was, uh, I, bu- I think it was to New York. It was to come see uh, you and Mike. And the thing is, I found a deal. It was like three, two, three hundred dollars off. Like we're talking like a substantial amount. I think it was like fifty bucks less. I just would have booked like Expedia, you know, these things. But because it was a substantial amount, yeah, uh, <laughs> that's funny. Uh, because it was a substantial, I booked it, and then I realized, I think. The day of I was leaving, I looked at the website name and it was like some weird like ubigscam.com. There's something weird, but not like it was just a weird name. I remember. I'm like, yo. So, I so think you did end up getting scammed. F- what? So what, did you get it? Did you get your flight or not? Yeah, yeah the flight worked oh. and everything. But I, I was freaking out. I was calling. I'm oh. like, bro, Wait, so it wasn't a scam. No, it wasn't. Oh. So that has nothing to do with what you said. You started yeah. saying you were scammed. Yeah. <laughs> I thought I got scammed. I thought. <laughs> I feel like I'm dealing with two atoms. <laughs> oh, but let me just say this. First of all, I don't know the guy's total history, but he's been doing podcasts since 2022, and he's got all kinds. I don't want to go <laughs> into this. What are you talking this. about, well, bro? This on. guy's insane. Let me explain ah! myself. I know you guys told me someone like me just wouldn't fall into that category, but there's a lot of people. I have trouble believing that that many people would get. I think it's more of a question of smartness. Sometimes you get outsmarted and things look okay. That's all I'm Listen to me. The guys Listen that did me. airline tickets uh, scams. Listen to me. We're we're watching your 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 airplane ticket salesman <laughs> right in front of you. Um, so are you trying to say that you're shocked that other people have fallen for the same scams that you've fallen for? Let me let me be very clear in terms of my reasoning. Try. I'm shocked that it's happening at such a high level. One two people here. Not there. high level. You mean at volume, such a volume volume. Grand scale. Yeah, the scale is what bothers you. One scam equals one video, and he's got about 40, 50 videos. That's it. That's 50 scams. Dude, you you do more than 50 scams a week. <laughs> You're one guy. That's that's true information. So what uh, kind of scams did you do during the week? You I was thinking, I was watching the last podcast. Okay, this is a comedy show. You want me to play your game? All kinds, all right? <laughs> That's such a joker laugh. <laughs> so yeah. here's what I did. I had a fake money order check, right? And then I found an old lady in the street. I said, ma'am, they won't cash my money order because because I'm bald. So I'll sign it over to you and you give me the actual value of it. And then I'll take the cash. You'll take the money order and then you'll cash it in. In fact, I'll even you can give me less than what's on the money order and you'll make money off this transaction. And then he fucking took advantage. Somebody tried to do that to me when I was 12. A guy. Yeah. And then I was 12 and I was like, listen, bro. You're an adult man. If you can't cash that, there's no way I'm giving you money to try to cash it myself. God. Uh, oh, that's a smart answer. I was like, yeah, it was a kid. Yeah. Yeah. Something he would have fallen for, guaranteed. A hundred percent. Have you fallen for I that? Just, I just never had. Wait. Yeah, have you? Say the story again. Uh, people come with you with one of those money orders from uh, the post office? No. No? No. I remember. I, I just didn't have money at that age. So I was like. I was Even like, if I did at that age, there's no way. I would yeah. fall for this. Like, why would I? It doesn't make sense. Also, here, take this check, yeah. deposit it in your account, and just give me the cash. Somebody, no, tr- bro. Somebody tried that on me once at the the TD on JT. Mm-hmm. I'm walking in, it was nighttime. Yeah, they I, do that night a lot. Of, and yeah. I knew he was gonna ask me. And I walk in, and he goes to start talking. And I go, no. He goes, yeah, no. I, I pulled out money. I left. <laughs> mm. I'll tell you because he guy- approached me with the check. You know, yeah, like yeah. he was like, hey. hey, hey. No. So you have an account here? Deposit your own fucking account. Yeah, exactly. Why Why am I the middleman? I want nothing to do with you. I'm going to tell you about a story of a guy who thankfully is no longer in my life. It was a... I don't know how you want to want me to play with the words, but a dishonest person slash a scammer slash a desperate person that, do, that will do anything. That's a lot of slashes. This is the story of a guy who scammed so, me. So listen Are to Are you talking this. about yourself? I was victimized by this guy, but thankfully he's out. No, I'm talking about a guy I'm who a did victim. this to me once, but after that I was like, take a hike. Anyway... 
he wrote a check. The story was that his uncle was a janitor and and someone was he had a, he had a rent he had a check in someone's name, and he said I'll give you I'll give you that check I'll put that check in your name for it wasn't a large amount maybe a hundred dollars, and um, sure enough the check bounced and wow. I said just give me fifty and anyway the guy was you know what I think he was doing I think he was I don't know if he was breaking in the cars he was he's a nutcase right what do you mean breaking the cars I know exactly what he was doing he was making money from finding idiots. a means where he gets a check that's probably real. Forges a signature, and next well, thing I think you know, the check wasn't real. That's why he, he, it bounced. It was a real person. The check wasn't a fake check. But when you steal someone's check, you forge a signature. That's a, that's fraud. Anyway, I'm I'm, I'm answering your question, but I really life for that lessons one. with Adam. <laughs> if you steal a check and sign it yourself, that's considered fraudulent. I like this segment. Welcome to Fraud FM. <laughs> I really like this. And I segment. will be your coach. Hosted by Adam. So wait, hold on. It's I'll... not fraud if you believe it. Go ahead, okay. Poseidon. Go ahead. Fraud FM. I have a question. Are you looking at all these life coaches because you aspire to be a life coach yourself? No. Okay. Because he said, he. Because I'm asking because you used the word and I'm your coach. So I just thought. Oh, no, no. Fraud FM. <laughs> where your coach is his coach too. <laughs> Fraud FM. Coming at you. Like a bad check. <laughs> uh, just coaches doing coachly things. I would like coaches to share doing a, coach stuff. I would like to share an interesting thought with you. We spoke about Go this ahead. briefly in a prior podcast. So I never was able to understand how, there are, how people working in organized crime, in this case, in this particular case, the Italian mafia, could go on a podcast and expose themselves and talk about all their experiences of having done illegal stuff in a recorded environment. That makes absolutely zero sense to me. Uh, there's something called, uh, what, what is it, when 10 years pass? Statute of limitations, but yeah. still, man, do you want people to know you did shit like this? What's the point? They're like, old wow. They're old heads, bro, and the mafia isn't really what it used to be, so. Mm. And uh, uh, Pantelis actually m- m- gave me the name of one of the families that, that spoke. And I the Gabagools and Barabuch. Ew. Something like I, that. I know, I know. Uh, I Welcome know. to Fraud FM, where every week Adam tells you <laughs> how to best fraud your landlord. H- have you heard of the Burgesses? Vaguely. The Hamburgesses. <laughs> I don't remember. There was something that. Vaguely. <laughs> vaguely. I remember the Burgesses <laughs> vaguely. God, bro, he's too much. You just Welcome to Fraud FM, name? brought to you You're by hilarious. the Hamburghese family, the Fugazi Burghese, as they know <laughs> on the street. Have you heard of uh, Have you heard of Don Burghese? No, I haven't. Yeah, you know. <laughs> you know I'm the Don Burghese. <laughs> I can't write. Delicious Burghese. <laughs> okay, how about this? Let's. How about we it? can stick to rational thought here, okay? So his question I'm was. I'm gonna go and blab. Let me finish, please. I'm gonna go and blab about some mafia's a boss that sent me to do this. That guy's gonna fucking fuck me up. You know, according to logic, would that not stand to reason? I'm gonna go on a podcast and tell about how my boss made me do this. Fraud FM, sense. where we're giving you the best life <laughs> advice on fraud-related activity. For example, and I don't that rat podcast. out your mafia boss and on I podcast. Your mafioso boss. Your mafioso b- 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 boss, boss. Fraud FM. Because you walked out, you had something to do. He asked, how can these old Italian mobsters... I heard it. Oh, you heard it. Okay. Well, because they're old and they've done their time and yeah. they're not saying anything that's incriminating anyone. Yeah, they've either done their time or the statute of limitations. If or... you can talk Fine, and no one's going to go to jail. don't show your face. Yeah. Don't, but why not? That. Do you... Okay, correct me if I'm wrong. I, you there will are be. People but most of the, the people are that dead. Are killed. I was just about to say, they're killed because you talk. Nobody's, yes, nobody's, you're not you understanding. Know? You're not killed because of the act of talking. You're killed if what you talk, what you say, will land someone in prison well, or get them killed. Both. Yeah. No, no, you're they don't mind. You're risking getting they also, killed. How about that? No, you're, but you're not listening to what I'm telling you because you're a dickhead. Go ahead, go ahead. The talk. Ta- they don't actually mind that your mouth makes noise. It's not the talking yeah. that's the problem. What they care about is what you say. Is it going to land someone in prison or get them killed? If it doesn't do either, yeah, yeah obviously, or <laughs> both, you dipshit. If it doesn't do either of those things, then they don't care. I'll give you the best example. All right. You if know no how- one can go to prison or die because of what you said, Thank you. they don't care. You know how you got in trouble with uh, the law recently and you were under house arrest? So if we talk about that story now, you no already one- got your sentencing. It's, it's, yeah, it's yeah. done. Okay. No I one's going to go to jail or die. No one's going to have any consequences. So we could talk about it freely because it happened. 
But had you done something illegal like that, what you did, I don't like if we what... talk about how you're trying to raise your rent money by having that impromptu glory hole at your apartment, yeah, and then you and the landlord are pretending like you don't know who's on the side when you both know it's you and him. Okay, I get your point. Yeah. But work with me about what you guys said a few moments ago. How do you know that the guy who was participating with in me the glory in this hole, act yeah. doesn't know who I am? Isn't watching my podcast? And the guy who was participating in the act of the glory hole knows who you are, hopefully. But he's pretending he doesn't. What I'm doing is arguing the logic that you're using, okay? Hold on, you, do you know what a glory hole is? No. Okay, sorry. I was I was too focused on what I wanted to say. It was too, it's, it's too glorious. <laughs> glory hole. I've never heard those two words, you, those two words used in conjunction with each other. Really? Glory hole, no. <laughs> That's a surprise. What do you guys um, what do you guys call it? Uh, mystery For curtain. Okay, it is a means that will bring glory, but I oh. honestly, you lot, you really threw me off track. <laughs> It'll bring glory, all right. Oh fuck, my parking. Welcome to Fraud FM. More glory than a hole. Fraud FM. Wouldn't it have been cheaper for you to park inside? Yeah, but it's nice out, so I just park on the street. I'm fucking lazy. Whatever. <laughs> So you know I hope what? I didn't get a ticket. This reminds me of that famous saying: "The answer is there is no answer." Some people don't want people to know, period, that they did anything illegal, and some people are like, "Well, if they if they if they do their due diligence to make sure that nobody's at risk of of the of the event backfiring." Okay, you got a point. <laughs> I mean, he's I so much... I can't. I <laughs> every time I see him, I still can't believe that he's a real human. I still feel like he's playing a prank on me. But he's not playing a prank. I know this. But I just feel like he's not... Like, there's no way Adam could be a real human being. Like, you're almost ethereal. Are you aware of this? I forgot what ethereal means. Like trans Out of this like, world? Yeah. Like, translucent. Non-existent. You're a godly presence mm. in this god-forsaken world. You know, there was a guy... I'm not going to lie to you. We were talking about this woman at least five times now who didn't want any, anything to do with me. And I remember there was a comment that week that said, Adam is brain dead. <laughs> That was from her? I'm going to find out in therapy in like five years. Adam never existed. It was a figment of my imagination. And this podcast was just me talking to myself. Yeah, you, you, you heard of Fight Club? This is Fat Club. <laughs> fraud Club. <laughs> Welcome to Fraud FM. <laughs> fraud FM. <laughs> All right, so listen. So listen, here's the thing. It, it's not aggravated assault if you're not aggravated. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. Uh, speaking of uh, crimes and stuff, the car theft. I want to talk about the car theft in Canada. Dun, 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 I saw dun. something on the news that says that there was like something like 2,000 or whatever. Man, it, it has gotten worse port. than in the U.S. Because in the U.S., I think they would steal cars, you know, chop them up. It wasn't that. Is it still pronounced U.S.? I thought they were pronouncing it U.S. <laughs> <laughs> or U.S.A. U.S.A. I was going to say the same thing. U.S.A. I am from the U.S.A. And the it Usa sounds kind of cool, actually. Um, <laughs> dude, in 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 uh, I think Toronto alone, I think they issued a, like a, a emergency warning to citizens. I think like six hundred something cars in thirty days. This is old news a bit though. I heard about that too. There was something on the news. About like that. what is Toronto, that? Yeah. Like uh, it was like twenty six cars a day for thirty days. You know, what people started doing. You know what the police told them? Bam, 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 bam. Leave your keys at the front. Yeah, yeah we went through leave, this. Yeah. yeah, which is completely insane. Some people started putting, they bought boots. People bought, you know, the boots that you buy and they, like you put on your car for a parking ticket? They buy the boots, but they have the key to take off the boot. Right? Wow. So they put boots on their own cars. So the, the thieves, and they put on all fours so they can't drive away. I saw pictures of this. They put boots on their cars so they can't drive away. And then every morning when they wake up to go to work, they remove the boots. And then drive off to work and then come back, put on the boots. Like, it's insane. Uh, also, I saw, you know, those things that come out of the ground, those pillars that rise up? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I yeah. saw those too. They put those to protect their car. Let me add some very relevant information. I saw, I think it was on YouTube or something. There were people that, I'm sure you guys know what carjacking means, right? Give me your fucking, get, they point yeah. a gun at your head, give me your keys, uh, get out of here, and, and I'm taking your car. That's, uh, that's, to have the guts to do something like that, that's crazy. So that's been happening. And now, because this used to be really reserved to like SUVs, like uh, we're talking about like American brands, like uh, big SUVs, you know, Tahoe's, Suburbans, uh, Durango's, Grand Cherokee's, Wranglers. Wranglers were very popular for theft and they were super easy to steal. Um, man, I've, I've been seeing it. Uh, Toyota and Lexus SUVs were a very popular brand to steal as well. Now it's been 
bleeding into like BMWs, bro. I, I see strikers on marketplace all the time, bro. I saw what's this a striker. What's a striker? <laughs> uh, so, oh, sorry. So a striker car is basically a car that has no VIN. You can't you can't trace the car anymore. Are you serious? You, so, yeah, you're but, allowed to buy one. Well, they pay cash and then they re-steal it from you and then sell it to somebody else and re-steal it from that person. What do you mean? Hold on, that doesn't make any sense. Why would I buy a car that I know the intention is for them to steal it? Well, from you me? won't know, but you're like, well, fuck, I could get this Lambo for like 30 grand. No, no, but what I'm saying is, let's say right now I yeah, buy yeah. a Lamborghini for 30 grand. Let's just say I have to go register it. I'm allowed to register with no numbers. You don't. But the thing is, if you get pulled over, you're rattled. Exactly. You're finished. How am I not going to get pulled over with no license plate? No, no, no. You, they get fake plates and stuff. There's, there's but ways if they pull that. you over and then you, they ask you for your VIN number, you're fucked. Because the, no, the if cops they pull, check that, no, if they, they run check. your plate, then you're you're, you're ruined. It's, it's a, a fake it's plate. A, yeah, it's a dead giveaway right away. You can't trace the plate. Just to let you guys know, I have an imagination. <clears throat> Unless they have another car that is legit and they they manage to fab fabricate. That's license. VIN swapping. That's a different story. But we're talking about. But you have to have the exact same Lambo. Exactly the same color, yeah, the but same it, what year. What I'm saying is true though. So on these cars, it's rare. You know, so you can't really do a VIN swap. You can do a VIN swap on, like, I don't know, Chrysler 300s, let's say. Of course, say. of course. You know, you find a 2013 black one with, like, a, a 300s. Anyways, whatever. I'm going into details that aren't Actually, needed. Actually, tell us Hold on, point. bro. I can't finish. Sorry. Uh, so, basically, what they do is they, they steal these cars, some of them. And what they do is they put them up for sale on Marketplace as a striker. So, then they sell, they'll, they'll sell the, let's say another a good example is a Grand Cherokee, right? They'll sell the Grand Cherokee for like 10, 15 grand. You're like, nice, I get a 2019 Grand Cherokee for like 10, 15 grand. But these thieves, what they do is they, they erase the VIN. You can't insure it, can't nothing. You have to drive around uh, uh, basically, un, like. If you buy that, you're a fucking idiot. And yeah. you get into an accident, but then, you're fucked. You well, if you get it. into an accident, you have to run away from the scene of the crime. From the accident, I meant you, you the can't stay bender. at the accident. I meant the no, no, even bender. a fender, but you cannot stay there. You have no, to no, leave. No, no, but I'm saying you can't go to an insurance and say I got to know. You have to. No, pay no, what there insurance? Yourself. If you get a fender bender, you're running because if they catch you with that car, you're going to jail. Again. Yes, too, exactly. Too, but I'm just saying, you so, have an accident, you got to go to your garage. You, there's no insurance that you can claim. But with the thing, yeah, yeah started no, even worse. The second the accident, you lo that's not your car anymore. You leave. Yeah, yeah, because yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, you depending you, on what happens, but yeah. No, 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 you're not understanding. You fucking dipshit. If any governing body finds you with that car you're going to oh, jail yeah, they will you assume mean. you stole it you can't be like guys this stolen car is just okay. a fender bender I don't worry if you hit a pole or something it's your own car he's not no understanding reason. i thought you meant another car you have to call the cops no you can't do you, that. you hit a pole okay yeah, yeah. you hit a pole which yes. is government property oh okay on top of you that. leave <laughs> i hear they, you i hear you, you you cannot the second that car is in a public situation you got to get the fuck out of there this you house never, arrest. that's why you should never fall for that <laughs> trap if, if someone tells you you could buy this car but you can't register it you're like then i'm not buying this fucking car why would i not register my car i was uh, about to ask uh, poseidon no no but hold on i didn't even finish everything that i was saying so what they'll do is now they'll, they'll started stealing like beamers and stuff like that because they see that it's still cars in demand and the whole shipping overseas it's kind of getting a bit tougher because of what's been happening. So what they do is they, they sell them a striker car. So they'll buy like the brand new 3 Series, like M340, that's worth like even used, it's worth like 60, 70 grand. Put it up for sale on Marketplace for like 10, 15. They put a tracker in the car. So they'll let you drive it around for a while, re-steal it from you, you know, because you can't, you can't, uh, you know, you can't insure it, you can't plate it, nothing. Re-steal it from you, resell it. Rinse and repeat. Crazy, bro. It's insane what they're doing out there. And now no car is safe. Any any car that is after that has been made after 2020, I think, is no longer safe. What does that mean? Any nice car. Sorry. Any nice car made after 2020. Are they easy to steal? Is that why? It's not about be it being easy. It's about because they're high in demand and they're nice cars. People realize, like, because the whole overseas thing is insane. Because you would show up at the Port of Montreal. And I heard this from people in all sorts of businesses, right? Ten grand. As soon as you show up to the port, the guy hands you ten grand and it's shipped off, because it's gonna sell for double the price. Let's say it's uh, Plus selling Africa, for for example. It's it's selling for fifty here. It'll sell for eighty ninety overseas in Are South Africa. Are you trying to convince me and Adam to join your <laughs> your car theft ring? Yes. <laughs> Uh, I don't know how I know this. By I don't know the way. how to steal cars. I don't know how. To, I, it's uh, rather easy, actually. I it to seems like it, but I don't think it is. No, it's easier than it used to be. Older cars, like you'd have to, you had to break in and do the whole thing. Now, bro, you just get a receptor, you find the code of the remote, bam, you're in, baby. A little piece of information. Isn't that hard though that to I, find the code of the remote? Not if you have the machine, bro. I've seen them do it in 20, 20 seconds. They're gone. I wanted to share an interesting piece of information. If you were to take a car that's stolen, let's say, ship it to the states. 
they know there's ways to find out. That you cannot don't. ship it to if the states. If you take it to Africa, they don't have the same way of, of, of knowing the VIN. They have it. No, the, the Africans don't care. Bro. They have their own, yeah, the, the, the we're talking about people that don't have water. They do not give a fuck about your VIN number. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Here the VIN there's is real flat. problems and then there's uh, real yeah. problems. That yeah. doesn't rank on the radar. Not yeah. having a VIN. Yeah. Anyways, okay. so yeah, you know but that. man, these car thefts have been going ham, and they've gotten so aggressive where they they break into houses, and at gunpoint, they wow. at gun. Where's your key to your car? Because you know what people started wow. doing, they started putting the keys in those uh, Faraday boxes. I think they're called Faraday boxes. Then locking them up in a safe, stuff like that, so the thieves can't. You know, they can't get the signal for the key and run off. So, so some of these thieves, what they started doing, like, fuck this, break in, gunpoint, give us the key to your car right now. I was under the impression that there were ways to break into the car without the owner there. You know, like hot wire. There are, but the thing is, a lot of like Toronto and Montreal uh, youths that are doing this are very low IQ. Yeah. Like, you might even have a higher IQ than them. So, no, no, it's true. So, they just go through the motions and they're like, dude, there's no way I'm going to figure out how to use a receptor. I don't understand how to use my iPhone. Oh, no, it's because they so, can't. Because they, so they're just like, fuck it. I'm just going to go brute force. And that's what you do. Yeah. Sophisticated wow. criminals like the mob and stuff, they want no trace. They go yeah. quiet, silent, like assassins. These fucking kids are all idiots. Some of them videotape themselves doing it. Yeah. Are you sick? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Are they sick? It's yeah. so... Um, give, me, give me your Audi, fam. I'm it? sick to my stomach because I don't have an Audi, fam. It's gotten really bad out there, man, for the for the car thefts. Like, even, like, I was looking at cars because I'm, like, I'm tired of my Civic. And I'm like, fuck, if I just buy a car and it gets stolen, like, what's the point? There was an audience member from Toronto. Because I was like, does anybody <clears throat> not speak French? And they didn't speak French. And I go, how come? And they go, from Toronto. And I go, oh, that doesn't surprise me. I was in Toronto recently. You guys don't even fucking speak English. <laughs> <laughs> It doesn't <laughs> shock me that you don't speak French farm. That's what you said. Yeah, it was That's that. amazing. <laughs> Sick to my stomach, fam. <laughs> um, little, just a little detail. I am, I'm sure the common sense says if you're driving a Porsche, whatever, a high-end car, you're gonna have satellite tracking on that car. Oh, it doesn't matter. The, the cops the don't. Nobody cares. You know. Okay, I'm gonna tell you a story. You're gonna freak out at this because you're not in very well informed. I've known. I've noticed. <laughs> Go ahead and you inform think? me. <laughs> so, <clears throat> so the cops. So there was this one guy. He kept buying, uh, I think, a Yukon or a Suburban, and it was for business purposes. A right? Yukon. And these are big GMC. eight-seater SUVs, yes. right? Either the GMC or the Chevy, and uh, and what happened? I think he ended up getting his car stolen like fucking four times. Wow. Which is funny. Like after after three, it starts getting funny. Yeah, but because it's business and insurance, the guy never cared. But eventually, it came to the point where like he was losing clients and shit. Anyway, so he got fed up. So what he did was he put three air tags in his car. Oh, you this is the a, guy that found him in like yeah, India. Yeah. So do you know what an air tag is? I think in Abu so. Dhabi. It's a way to trace your car. Yeah. So it's yeah. A, he put three air tags, and these are connected to the internet. The company right? is called Tag, I think. So, so yes. no, it's uh, Apple. Oh, that's actually. something else. Tag Anyways, is. I get it. I get it. No. Go it's on. The boomerang. Yeah. He's thinking of the boomerang. Thank yeah, you, the boomerang you. is satellite. Same that's idea. different. No, no, it's not the same idea. One is satellite. One is the internet. Okay. Listen to me for a second and stop interrupting. Okay, Adam. The only way you learn is if you listen to Fraud FM's resident <laughs> fraud car expert. And what happened was is uh, so his car gets stolen. The air tag pings in Toronto, then disappears, then re-pings at the Port of Montreal, then disappears, re-pings in Switzerland, disappears, keeps pinging all throughout Europe at truck stops, I guess, and then disappeared as soon as it entered the Middle East and re-pinged in Abu Dhabi. He then hired a private detective to go get the, an image of the guy's VIN to prove that it's his car in like Saudi Arabia or Abu Dhabi, I think, somewhere in the Middle East. Abu Dhabi. <laughs> Why did I say it like that? You know, my car is in Abu Dhabi. <laughs> oh, is it? Okay. Abu Dhabi, man. <laughs> Abu Dhabi, man. The private detective sends him back the picture, and this whole thing came out and everything. And this guy cracked the case with air tags. And the, the private detective apparently even got death threats in the Middle East. Are you that he's serious? like, if you, if, you, if you accept uh, hiring, from uh, the, you know the West again, like we're gonna kill you. It's a whole, b it's a crazy business. But man, he the did money it anyways. No, no, he no, did it no. the first time. He's not gonna redo did it. The first time he didn't. Yeah, he values uh, his life over car justice. So yeah, he got threatened, and he bro, he cracked the whole case with three air tags, and the cops couldn't figure it out. And we knew people knew for the longest time. Was anybody eventually busted for it? 
A little detail. It's not. I don't consider that a little detail. Somebody just stolen my Sorry, car. Hold on. Like I don't you're not care listening to what he's telling you. I feel like you listen to yes. three of the words and then and then stop listening. There is one bus that has been done. I think it's the fall guy in the Middle East. They just fucking like, okay, we need somebody like, because it, it, it created too much heat. And that guy was probably not even Middle Eastern. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Like the Sri Lankan guy is the king. Yeah, exactly. He's like, I don't even have a passport. Yeah, exactly. You know, so apparently somebody got it, but I don't believe it. And uh, but but the thing is, you know, you know, what's crazy. Our government, out of all oh. the things they over uh, mix themselves in, like, I don't know what the word I'm looking for. They involve themselves. They involve over involve themselves into everything. They involve themselves in people's bedrooms. Yeah. One of the things you'd think they'd involve themselves with is what comes through our port and goes through our port. But no, no. just no. Bro, there have been people beeping the alarm. At, containers start beeping, bro. The, people the, go with their key. No, we can't. The do government nothing. cares more about oh. what goes into or out of someone's butthole <laughs> than they do what comes in and out of the country. Yeah. Have you noticed that? Yeah. They care more about gay, straight. You can't be gay. You could be gay. They care more about that than they do about what's actually coming through the port. Yeah. I have one hell of a story to share with you guys. No wonder my father escaped. Yeah. <laughs> I don't remember his last name, but his first name was Andrew. There was a Brit, um, a guy. No Prince joke. Andrew? No, no. He was a guy who, uh, he was always selling drugs to various places. And he had people go from England all the way bro? to Jamaica. Why are you snitching, bro? This now was a YouTube kn- video. Now everyone knows that Andrew this on YouTube is a, YouTube is a drug video. dealer. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, I remember, look, I didn't investigate it thoroughly. But all, all I know is that he, had, pe- he had people in the, in the British authorities that he was able to pay off. This guy was a fucking millionaire because he, he had drugs come in from Jamaica and wow, I'm just. If I, I was a, like a is, crazy wow. criminal, I would involve the police. A hundred percent. I would involve the police well, and the government because I'd be like, the government, they're already. We already know that the they're criminals. Are the government? Well, yeah, it got. I'd be like, you're already the the criminals. Yes. So I would involve let's everyone. So that, yeah, let's work together. But it got go it you. got so bad with car theft. It's gotten so bad here in car theft that people are theorizing that the cops and the insurance companies are in on it. And even the dealerships. Well, the dealerships don't do anything about it, and the manufacturers, because they're like more sales. Okay, uh, the cops didn't do shit for the longest time, so people were like, "There's no way the cops must be in on it." You know, they're probably getting fleeced or not fleeced. Uh, line, line. Oh, fuck, I'm, I'm forgetting my words today. I'm so I feel retarded. Now, guys, I really hope I'm not going to get an uh, like a, a very negative reaction from you when I'm going to ask you this question. But was the guy at least able to get his car back? He's pinging. It's his car. Somebody's th- <laughs> from Abu Dhabi, <laughs> from Saudi. Go collect, bro. You know what? Show up in Saudi Arabia and be like, yeah, bro, okay. somebody stole you're my car. If it you're was a special $5, type of mental Corolla, patient. No, if it's $100,000, I don't know how much it costs to ship a car back to Canada. I don't know. No, no, it's not even the price. It's they don't care. Dude, it's not. They're in Saudi Arabia and in, uh, in, uh, in the United Arab Emirates, all these countries. They don't give a fuck about you. They throw you, dude. gay people off the roof. You realize they throw gay people off roofs. They don't care. Not not the UAE though. The UAE doesn't do that. The, it's, not the uh, UAE. Yeah, it's the is... Saudis. The Saudis are still nuts. Yeah, yeah. The UAE is very modern. Let's address yeah. that. They're very uh, they're, they're, you know because of Dubai and everything. They become very modernized. Very, very modernized, friendly. Yeah. Very nice. They have cool uh, cop cars like Lamborghini cop cars. Have it's you seen? It's true. It's true. Yeah. They also poop on people. Probably strikers <laughs> from Facebook Marketplace. <laughs> All their Lambos. Yeah. They put from me. I remember that. that no, was, no problem. I saw. I saw videos of that. That was disgusting, bro. What? Of people getting shot on their faces. You saw videos of yeah. it. I didn't have to go that far. I understand I, what it is, and I, I don't want to see for it. For some reason, <laughs> when I hear of something either gory or disgusting, I ha- like I cannot look away. Like, All right. Like well, even that's... like if I walk by vomit, I know it's vomit. It's disgusting, and it disgusts me. But I cannot look away. I have to see it. Well, I would not brag about it, especially considering how invested you were in Pizzagate. Who the fuck knows what kind of videos you've been watching? <laughs> I can, it's like the car crash. I cannot look away from the car crash. Yeah. And, uh, well, you know, a car crash is different. Yeah, I know. But any type of crazy shit like that, I can't. I have a hard time looking away. And not because I'm aroused. Well, but not not because you're aroused. I guess. I don't know. I'm bad with grammar. <laughs> Are you aroused when you see dangerous situations? Depends on what it is. Yeah. All right. I got an interesting story to share you guys. I bet you do. I will take into consideration what you said earlier. You guys don't He's know the characters? He's been on his own trip. He completely ignored everything it, we said. He has it's no very idea. interesting. Did I not he ask no you idea what he did he with right the now. car once he found, found out it got stolen? No, I heard everything. Okay, keep going. 
So this was many years ago. I had um, I knew this guy. He Andrew. Um, no, I had this guy. You know, you talk about people that are just parasites, pieces of shit. A little like this guy who gave me the stolen check, right? Or the check that was not legitimate. Forget, oh, so wait, the whole the whole check thing was you. Would you stop? He so, scammed why, why? me because he put my name on the check. You want a hundred dollars? You want a hundred dollars in the form of check? Give me fifty. You know, or he actually he owed me money. But and hold on, because you initially presented the story as it wasn't you, somebody that's desperate and whatever. You never presented this as yourself. So you it got scammed. It wasn't me. I but know what it was. Okay, you. so hold on. I know a guy who's a, who's a piece of shit what the fuck? Who's, who scammed me, and I was explaining to one of his scams that I was victimized for the check. He said his uncle worked as a janitor and he got a check. So that was the story. It looked like a legit check. It has yeah, a name but when you initi- hold on, am I crazy or, or am I making things up? When he started this story like 20 minutes ago, he presented the story as if it was somebody else that got scammed. I can't remember. Oh, no, I got it- scammed through somebody whose guts I hate because of what he did. And I explained to you what he did. Okay, so you were scammed and you hate the scammer. That's right. That's right. Finally. At least you're admitting it. Now, you're not in love with this scammer. <laughs> Holy shit, we never came to the anyway, bottom of that. Was a, um, the scam that pretended to be a girl in the States, in Atlanta, I believe. Oh, yeah. No, well, how did it end? You never, never told mind. us. Never mind. Never mind. I wanted to focus on the story. <laughs> so there was Before you continue, though, knew. how did that end? Because people are curious. Okay, yeah. the, the, the person's out of my life. What do you want me I to know. say? I know. How did it end? We've completely forgot. Did we you understand up, what it means to block somebody? It's not complicated. No, no, but what led to I you finally my, being like, oh my God, I they were right. This is fake. What gave it away? What was the, what was that moment? I don't remember all the details. Yes, you do. Yes, you and do. And I'm going to tell you something. I have quite a number of listeners that are listening to me. I closed my social media accounts. Okay. I know, so but you're not. I don't not, care who, what, where. A whole bunch of people basically were no longer. I didn't have I any get contact. It. What did you realize that triggered you? And you're like, fuck, they were right. This is not a real person. I don't remember. I, I try my best not to think about these things. Okay. But was it egregious? Were you like, oh, this is too obvious. Even I can't fall for this one. He sent a dick pic, didn't he? <laughs> uh, am I going to be able to tell you my story or not? You will, but can you answer this yeah, question? You have to... I don't remember. You, That's a you, lie. you remember creeping a woman out 57 years ago, but you don't because remember. Because it was on my mind for a long time. And this these hasn't the, been on your mind. These are things that just, you know, went and left. You cyber dated some fucking Indian dude for fucking a year. And this, <laughs> it sure went on for a year. It yeah. went on for a while. Bro, this guy had you on the hook. How many Walmart gift cards did you give? It's, that's no not, comment. That is not your business, okay? <laughs> not, that is not your business, guys. Okay? <laughs> but seriously. I know story. I brought it up 53 times in past podcasts. There's a podcasts. true story that actually technically could have gotten me arrested. So let me please get to the heart of the story. All right, go. So there was this guy. Um, I remember it was a friend of mine at the time. And I remember getting this. Um, it was a Mustang GT convertible. No joke. I was actually 25, and you're, if you're under 25, Bro, you can't rent so these he's so full of shit. Cut. Hold on. He remembers the exact make and model of every fucking car, but he can't remember what happened a year ago. <laughs> you you're full of, of shit, You are Adam. full of shit, Adam, you're but go on. You're full of shit. Go on, full so of shit, I, Adam. This was, I had just turned 25, and you cannot rent high-end cars. Uh, like Volvos and Cadillacs and what have you. You can rent Corollas and Camrys. Oh, well, this, this, is, this is from 30 years ago, too. Yeah. yeah so like you remember what happened 30 years ago? You don't remember what happened a year? Let me finish the story, please. So I lent it to this guy, okay? It was a friend of mine. And there was another guy who was kind of a shady person. It turns out that he was selling drugs, okay? Now, listen, to it's pretty creepy, but thankfully I was off the hook. So this guy that I was friends with somehow lent... lent Relent the car or gave the car to this other guy and wait, so you he, lent the car to the guy? Let me explain. Hold on, you I rented lent a the car? car to the first person. You and rent hold on, hold on. You rented a car. Yes. And then the car that you rented, right. you decided to lend to someone. That's right. A good car. Because you're a that mental was not patient. A problem. And That's then insane. that person lent it to someone else. I think it was something like oh, you know what happened? I remember now. The car, the car is uh, somewhere. The keys are in the in the gas can, the, the gas tank, and I think I had told this guy. Okay, it wasn't smart, but I had told this guy. Okay, I'm lending it to you. And Why? No, no, he no, made no, me a no, business no. offer. He was selling drugs. I didn't know he was selling drugs. It was something. So like, what was the hey, business got, offer? I think it was something like like a passport scam. But I need this car. I need this car. Can I get a? You know what I mean? And it was. So wait, the business offer was for you to get a fake passport? No. 
the business offer was, lend me this car. I got this guy. Uh, he's going to give you, I think it was $300. And there was something associated with a, with a fake passport. I don't remember. It was 20. That's not I the know exactly point. what happened. I know the exactly point. what happened. Okay. Stop. You're going to stop right there. I know exactly what happened. These assholes really liked Mustang GTs. And it was a convertible, right? What year was the car? Right. You're, 2000. 2003, two, 2003. When he was, was 25, so yeah, it was 1998. Yeah, it was a 2003 Mustang GT convertible. Very nice car at the time, right? These assholes wanted to steal the car, right? And like, fuck, how are we going to steal the car? We needed a new, you know? All these car rental You're companies wrong. have. I'm not wrong. You're wrong. I'll tell You're you correct. why. I see You're this wrong. all the time. They're like... Oh, you know what? We know this dummy. Let's find an asshole. We know this dumbass. Let's find a dickhead. That can't count on his fingers. We're going to have him. Yeah, yeah, we just need to lend the car. He's going to go rent the car like a jackass, and then we're going to steal it from you're him. You're partially right. Partially. Okay, so now I, you're going to read Hold on. Mind. I went from being wrong <laughs> to partially right. Yeah, yeah. Why but I also, I also, I also want to know about this passport Scam hey, that they said they were going to involve him in. The problem is, if you don't let me talk, then you're not going to hear all the, all but, the meat of the story. So okay, please let go, me continue. Go, go. <sighs> it's coming back to me now, okay? No, oh, now I, it's coming back. I let this guy who had this passport scam, allegedly, who Fuck said you you're going to make ass. some money, I just need the car. Here's what happened, okay? It took his sweet ass time until he finally gave the car back to me, okay? Now listen, there's How a twist in the story. How much time is sweet ass time? A couple weeks, a week or something like that, okay? And you're you paying don't do this that. whole time. Exactly, you don't do that. So here's what ended up happening, okay? I went to the cops. I said, somebody stole my car, right? What he ended up doing is that now it's coming back to me now. He gave the car back to this other friend of mine. And I th this all happened like really quickly, right? I didn't even know about it. His phone was off. I don't remember the details. The bottom line is I reported the car stolen. And they ended up busting the other guy who knew nothing about what's going on. And they had some drugs in the car. They had some, some weed or something, okay? The guy was pretty annoyed, pretty pissed off, okay? Hey, you. I almost got arrested because the cops thought, if you know where the car is, why don't you fucking... I think I had, I had only approached them like a few days later, right? Yeah. I, I, Suspicious. And then this guy told me, I'm giving you the car back tomorrow. Listen, this is 20 years ago. All I, all I know is at the end of the day, okay. this is what really shocked me. The cops ended up busting the other guy. So I could have been talking about, okay, have I ever been in trouble with the law? No, but the cops said, don't ever do that again. So okay. If you know of, of a stolen car, you tell us right away. <laughs> of okay, course. So I know, I know so, what happened. I was off the hook, but they just, they gave me, a, they grilled me. And they so said, Adam rented this to lend it to his buddies because he's, uh, you know, I don't know why he's dumb, I guess. Uh, the second guy intended on stealing it. He probably stole it. But then what happened was he's like, oh, fuck, since I stole it, this drug dealer needs a car, but they pay cash. They don't have a credit card, right? Especially at the time. I'm going to rent it out to this drug dealer who is then going to drive it around. But then the thing is he couldn't steal it anymore because the other guy got busted and the drug dealer got busted for stolen car and probably for drug possession. And, uh, yeah, I think that's what happened. Also, And the he, second guy got away scot-free. I don't even free. think it needs to Adam, go into too much detail. Adam, Adam, Adam speaking of detail, you said you were going to tell me in the middle of the story, and you didn't. Yeah. What was the offer they made you to join in on that passport scheme? Oh, yeah. The guy just said, I'm going to give you $300. Three, whatever it was. I had nothing to do with this. Okay, let me back you up. You had everything to do with this. He actually. said, I yeah. will give you You literally you had money. everything to do with it. I you were literally the, the piece money. of that puzzle that made if it work. you yeah. lend me this car and I'm going to go do my scam. Yeah, what was the scam? I don't remember. This is 20 years. I would suck. Okay, hold on. You remember hold the make on, and model of the car? Hold on. I remember where where this one of the friends, one of the friends of the friend called me from Toronto. How did this guy get my number? Oh, the this thing that you've been talking about, it's not happening properly. Okay, it was a scam in a way. He told me he was doing a passport scam. He told me. It was a scam, obviously. We've huh. established that. What do you huh. mean in a but way? In the end, he was but what is it? Hold on. What does a passport scam have to do with this was what attracted me to, he says, I'm going to give you some money. He loves a I good scam. Some money. Adam can't, is attracted. Well, what does that have can't... to do with a car rental? Why do okay. you need to rent a car? Because they said if okay. you want us to involve you in the passport scam, you have to rent us this Mustang. No. He needed to be mobile. He had to do what he had to do to complete the scam. And he needed my car and he gave me money to borrow it. So you just said what he said. Yeah. Fine, fine. Paraphrased, but yes. Now, no, you said exactly what I fucking said. I, I thought you guys were thinking he needed me to participate in this scam. No. Angry you did participate in the scam. That's participating in the scam. And, you, and not only car. did you participate. You provided the vehicle yeah. for the scam. And not only did you participate. You got ripped off. You also lost money because it wasn't enough. It wasn't even enough to cover the cost of the rental. Yeah. And you know. You got scammed. And you knowingly participated. 
Yeah, you knowingly participated in a scam that ended up scamming you. You're okay. the worst fraudster ever. He is. <laughs> he who who is he? This is new. You I've never seen him. a goo of fraud. <laughs> well, guys, I was watching the episode of last week, and you guys were asking me, "Have you ever been? In, have you ever had to go to court?" With the exception of traffic tickets and what happened last year, no. Luckily, I I wasn't charged because the cops explained to me, well, we understand your point of view, but yeah, something like that. But anyway, I I thought it would be truthful, that's all. Jesus, (laughs) you're a lunatic. So you never had to go to court? You never had to go to court before? No, I was blacklisted from that company for quite a long time. (laughs) No shit. It was was Enterprise, wasn't it? No. It wasn't, and you're not going to ask, you're not going to, I'm not going to tell you which company. Why not? It's one of five. Because it's personal, okay? How's that you just Come admitted to, to fraud, to passport fraud. How the fuck is the company that blacklisted you the personal information here? <laughs> you, is... Dude, you have a weird priority list. Yeah, you're like the most insane person I've ever seen in my life. You he... heard of the Port Authority? You're the Port of Potty. <laughs> you know, he's shy of showing his chest hair, which, you know, chest hair is manly. You should yeah, be proud of it. Well, I had it. this argument with him before, but he has no problem with showing off his nose hairs. They're both something I shouldn't have. Who no, told? you should have chest hair. Should you should not have, have nose hair. You're not a woman. Yeah, you should have chest hair. And he covered it. He he had opened it. He's I'm like, yo, you look cool now. And yeah, he yeah chest it hair is up. fine. Nose hair, uh, no, no. Yeah. Ear hair, also a no, no. Yeah. Back of neck hair, also a no, no. Yeah. Chest hair. Yeah, yeah, okay. Chest hair is a big yes, yes. People yes. love that yes. shit. You think we're lying to you? It's the opposite, but it's not. Nose hair is the no no, yes, and the chest hair is the I'm good not in hair. Disagreement. Oh, okay. You said you were. You said you shouldn't have either. But you do the I opposite. Think the chest in behavior. hairs are optional. If you want to no, no, go if, ahead? If you no, don't no, want to, if go you ahead. can have them, you have them. They're not mm-hmm. optional. Some people don't have the option. They're just hairless. Some people have some chest hair. You got some chest hair? Flaunt that bitch. Yeah. Sorry, I went into your appearance, but it's just because I noticed it from the beginning. Because I'm like, because I saw him like before we were talking. I'm like, bro, like show off your. You have a lot of chest hair. It's manly. You means you produce testosterone, right? Yeah. And I go, I go, open up your fucking thing. And he opens it. And he's like, okay. I'm like, bro, you're not shy with your nose hair. How are you shy for chest hair? Right? You're right. That's and a then, good and assessment. And then before yeah. we started, he sneakily zipped it back up. And I was like, this is, that's why I had to bring it up. I couldn't, it was eating me alive. It's just a shy <laughs> little boy. Yeah. He's like, oh no, I can't show my chest hair. I got to talk about passport <laughs> fraud. Oh no, I rented a Ford Mustang GT convertible. Oh no, what's gonna happen? It would be such a shame if this drug dealer and passport fraudster were to get the keys. Oh no. Oh no. Guys, let me Which I conveniently put in the gas tank for them. Oh no. Oh no. Let me see if I might be able to kind of put an interesting spin on the way this podcast is going. (laughs) Yes. Why don't either one of you guys in this room tell me what you guys do in your spare time? Uh, Mostly passport related fraud. So what's first of all, <laughs> what spare time do you assume I have? I'm currently. You tell me. <laughs> uh, I am a uh, podcast mogul. Uh, I'm a stand-up comedian and podcaster. I produce uh, who knows how many podcasts a week. Yeah. I am currently running stand-up, my stand-up hour in English and in French. I'm also hosting a big uh, burlesque show, eight shows a week of that. Uh, I didn't know that until you told me that. Yeah, uh, I don't have what many would refer to as free time, sadly. All right. Well, yeah. How about this other person? It here? ain't free time because it costs money, and they call it free time because you're not making money. Poseidon is only free time. Hey. He refuses to work, refuses to podcast, <laughs> refuses to commit credit card or passport related fraud. Yeah. <laughs> He's all free time all the time. <laughs> you know, guys. You got costly time. Yeah, I'll so, tell you. <laughs> you, you, if you have free time, it's not free. It costs you. Yeah, if you have you, free time, you're gonna end up in jail. <laughs> yeah, you, you end up getting in trouble. You are the type like <laughs> you're a troublemaker. You are. I I remember I got jobs when I was a like a teenager and stuff, literally just to stay out of trouble. Yeah, you know. Now you know you do it to survive and to pay bills. But like, yeah, you need a job just so you don't die. It's the only way it keeps you out of prison. Yeah. yeah. I wanted to uh, actually. I'm actually using a serious demeanor now, right now. This, cl- this like show, I face. think we can actually discern that this show does have an education aspect to it, right? It, this no. this may be the most educational yeah. show Let me please tell you uh, where I'm going with this. in the country, I think. Yeah. Let me please tell you where I'm going with this. I remember, and this was discussed on the you podcast. You heard of the Magic School Bus? This is the real Magic School Bus. Yeah. <laughs> I remember I had said something like, why is it that we live in a society like Montreal? Never mind. This, we're just talking about Montreal. Quite the society, Never mind the rest yeah. of the world. 
where there are people whose homes are, the, are, are that some park in St. Henry and there are people like, whatever, Mike Ward, that are millionaires. You yeah. set it up so perfectly. It's not that these people just born, were born and one day, okay, this is, these are, these are what they were planning to do. The guy who lives on, chances are, the guy that lives in a park in St. Henry, he obviously made some poor choices. He decided to stop working. One it's would true think. that they may, may have mental disease, regardless. And someone like Mike Ward obviously made it a plan to be known on the map in terms of comedy. So that's all I wanted to say that, you know, it's, it's when you ask a question like that, what it shows that the person's see? IQ is not very high. Just read between the lines. Okay. Uh, when I asked that question, it took me some time to think about it, you and your answer was yes. correct. But you didn't even ask a question. You didn't ask a question. Why is yes, I did. Why is it that there are people that are Mike Ward that have a crap load of money, and there are people that ends up in countries that are poor and homeless? Yes, and broke? skill, talent, and work ethic. You work and you make it. Because basically, you just asked, why is the guy that's working his ass off successful, and why is the guy shooting up heroin in the park not successful? The Bad answer planning. is in the question. Yeah. One guy is working, the other guy is shooting up heroin in a public park. But how is this a real question? Well, how do you not understand? You're attaching the fact that he's shooting. He could just be whatever. So he do just doesn't want to work or he, he whatever. But if you don't want to. Okay. In so there's no way you're this So insane. listen, if you don't want to work, right, you cannot uh, reap the rewards and the benefits of work, right? So you. So let's say right now you're like, I would love to eat pizza. But you refuse to make the pizza yeah. or buy the pizza. I'll, and then you're like, it's a shame that pizza is not magically in my lap. I'll tell you yeah, what. Yeah, that's not how it works. Okay. You either go buy the pizza or you make the pizza or you're not going to get the pizza. These are simple things. I'll tell you what. So it was, it was poorly. I expressed myself pretty poorly. But all I wanted to say is that the idea where I've been educated is the idea that you just have to read between the lines on the question. No, you don't need to read between. That's not even a real question. You, that's not what you've learned. What you learn is you reap what you sow. Enough. Yeah. If you want something, you work towards that goal and you go get it like everyone does. So everyone listening to this right now, a lot of people, they're at work right now, okay? The whole reason why they're at work is they're thinking of, okay, I'm going to get the paycheck, which is going to be... My survival. Exactly. I need this to pay rent. I need this to buy food. I need this for my vacation. I need this to buy a place. Whatever it is. But in order to get that end goal, whether it's rent, PlayStation, food, whatever it is, I'm working in order to get that thing. They're not sitting back and they're like, ugh. All I'd right, love to pay me, rent this month, but I wonder how yeah. that would... Let me modify the the issue then. How come there are people that have minimum wage jobs and they struggle to pay their rent their right? whole lives and there are people like Mike Ward, let's say, that are wealthy? But there's many... Re you're asking something stupid. That's there's not a so basic many, thing. There's so many variables. Because Okay, let me... No, okay, I, I'll, I'll give I you an example. I speak retard. I speak hold on, hold on. retard. I'll give you an example because of what you just asked. So first of all, it's so vague. Why are there people who work minimum wage jobs? So not all minimum wage job employees are the same. So there are minimum, minimum wage job employees who are... Children in school that are working. A 14-year-old, a 15-year-old working at McDonald's cannot expect to make the same money as an adult entertainer well, that's been experience. doing this for 30 fucking years. Yeah. That is absurd. You asking that communist question is insane, yeah. first and foremost. Two, the other thing is there could be someone who is working for $12 an hour who has a job that that's the max they can get. Depending on where you are, what you do, there's a cap. There's always a cap depending on what you do. Now, obviously, True. there's more risk associated to jobs like this, jobs like stand up, because the risk is it's a zero. It's either zero, or you might make a living. Well, because but, essentially, you're also what he doesn't understand is you're running your own business. Yeah. So me, yeah. for example, I risk everything because I there's no guarantee. No one's paying me unless I do I my it. job. I get it. Whereas when you go in nine to five, no matter what, you're getting your fucking paycheck as long as you're there. Yep. I could work seventy hours and make zero dollars. There's no guarantee of money. No. So you're taking a bigger risk to maybe make a bit more money, but there's people that have been doing comedy longer than me who make less than minimum wage employees. There's mm -hmm. no guarantees, but there's a risk-reward aspect to it. Yeah. And there's also talent, obviously. But that's why not every job is equal. So someone working as a manager, or not even someone working as a regular cashier at a McDonald's cannot expect to make the same as, let's say, a doctor. The reason for that is because there's a higher demand for doctor. It's a skilled a uh, job that you need to go to school for, so it's much more rare. There's less of those, so they're going to pay you more because they want you. Whereas you could, it's easier to find a cashier, so you're more replaceable. So if you're more replaceable, they don't have to pay you as much because if you want more, they'll be like, "Well, I'll just pay the person who's going to want less." It, it's just, it's just supply and demand. Yeah. That's all it is. It's not complicated. It's not evil. It's it, that's just how yeah. life works. This is your typical capitalist uh, model. Yeah, that's <laughs> that's why. Well, and there's just something wrong with that. You find. Okay, I understand that people cannot read my mind, so let me explain why I brought up such a question. 
Okay, sadly, even my own father, he got, I think I said this last time, he got scammed or he got taken advantage of by th you. three of his former partners, where okay. all of a sudden he was on his ass, so to speak. Yeah. So the partner's gone and now I'm I'm screwed because my business is out of business, right? Okay, correct. What I wanted to say is that um, how, I need a few moments to like form the proper thought. Yeah, yeah. I was basically saying that how, okay, I should have rephrased my question. There are people who do work hard, but sadly, they find themselves in, in shitty situations. Okay. And, okay, and, and that has nothing to do with capitalism. Yeah. That has nothing to do with you're right, talking right. about Mike. You're just looking at the... I just thought of someone the nice, Yeah, the nice life. Success. But, but Mike has had, you know, it hasn't been easy for him. He's Mike, had, was at, Mike was at zero dollars like two years ago. Yeah. Like, uh, okay. my, uh, like Mike's worked his fucking ass off. Yeah. Um, but he's just an example. What you're saying is someone... What you have to understand is you have to get rid of the communist mindset someone's success is not the reason for your uh downfall non-success let's say not yeah, even yeah. your downfall your non-success just because let's say mike is successful doesn't that's not the reason why you're not successful it has nothing to do with it your success is normally directly tied into you your abilities yeah, yeah. uh your your capabilities your opportunities your it's you it's not like mike let's say right now tomorrow mike is no longer successful that's not, gonna yeah. it's it's not going to make you successful. It's not going to make you successful. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. And there, this is a hard pill to swallow for a lot of people. Even if you do get scammed, like your, how your father, you know, got screwed over by business partners, there is still a large percentage of that that is inherently your fault, fault as yeah. well. And that's a hard pill to swallow for a lot of people, especially somebody like yourself. But even if you got fucked over by people, there you still have a large percentage of it that is your fault. I repeat this because... It, you made that mistake, and it's okay to make that as long as you bounce back. You know what I mean? Yeah. I've gotten screwed over. I've had situations I've gotten where scammed. I, you know where we it hasn't gone the way, but you you get back up. That's it. That's what life is. So yeah. you know the, the you know the friend in common that we have that scam me out of money here. Oh yeah yeah. Okay. So when that happened, did I say, oh my life is over? I got scammed out of, out of those few thousand bucks. Yeah. Now I'm done. I'm gonna give up everything, and I'm done because he did this. I moved on. I said it's my fault. I shouldn't have trusted him. Yeah. And we let and me, I move on. I've been screwed over. I had a job where I thought I was getting paid commission and found out three months later there's no commission. That's Best Buy. Yes. As much as it hurts for me to say this for myself. It was his fault. It's also my fault. For, Did you for, have a contract? I was going to say listen. there are ways to recover he doesn't fucking your listen. money. I'm gonna lose. No, there was no money he, to recover. There was no money Best to Buy does not pay by commission. I took he, the, 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 the guy's I trusted word the person. It. I took the guy's word for it, which was a oh, lie. Oh, okay. Now, as much as it sucks for me, the truth is the fact that I thought it was on commission and it wasn't is just as much my fault as it is the guy that fucked me over. I got it. Do you understand? Yes. Because he lied to me. Yeah, he's a piece of shit, but I'm the idiot that believed him. Should have gotten a contract. Maybe it doesn't matter. I the guess, point is, I guess, yeah. The, 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 <laughs> maybe the whole point is, you 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 have to take responsibility yes. for the ups and the downs. Yes, you can't just be like, oh, uh, if I'm successful, it's all me, no one helped yeah. or whatever. But if I'm down, it's everyone else's fault. In fact, nay, it is your duty to 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 take responsibility as well for your downs because yep. then you don't deserve your ups. Yes. Let me please make another link to something you had said in a prior podcast. As a podcast. member of the Downs community. You remember, yeah. <laughs> yes, it was funny, but I'm trying to be serious with this particular part of the conversation. You remember you said that if you need to see a psychologist, if there's a need, you have something wrong with yourself, you go see a psychologist. First of all, you... Yeah. What the Go, fuck does this uh, yeah. there? First of all, you're paraphrasing poorly. That's not what I, you made it sound like. I'm, I'm, if somebody goes to a psychologist, I said they're fucked in the head. That's ne I never said that, but go on. You people seem to be somebody who doesn't. You, you people, the blacks. Don't fit the profile. There's two people in the room. Don't fit the profile of someone who needs people who need psychologists because you understand all the principles they teach. What does that have to do with anything? No, no it's, it's just a by the way statement. I don't have to see psychologists because I ain't no oh, bitch. By the way statement. <laughs> but yeah, uh, I, I ain't no bitch. That's why I, I hope I'm not too far from the truth when I, I believe you said something along the lines of you need to see a psychologist if there is a. The reason why somebody would want to go psycho to see a psychologist is based on the fact that there may be a need. Yes, the need could be you need to express yourself, you need some help you mentally. You need to talk to somebody. You, yeah, you need words. to address your feelings because some people just need to talk to someone they don't have Thank anyone you. to speak to. Yeah. yeah. And I believe you guys are one of the lower people to fit the profile of someone who needs that. Yeah, I don't need that at all. Thank no. you. That's all I want to say. But just well, because I don't need it doesn't mean you don't or someone else doesn't. Yeah, yeah, yeah. exactly.
Hence uh, the link that we're learning from this show. That's all I wanted yes, to say. Yes, people are learning from this show, but it's not. Stop saying like, that's all I wanted to say. That's not all you wanted to fucking say. You, it's fucking you, annoying. You right? rattled off some <laughs> communist bullshit. Yeah, you got that. Like, it's the fault of someone who's successful that you're not successful, which is not nowhere near the fucking truth. And you're right. Capitalism isn't you're the right. fucking problem. You filthy communist. Yeah, because you could work if you like something. If, if you're good at something, you could work and make it work. Just you 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 your whole life you refused to learn a proper skill. You refused to put hard work. You looked for the easy way out. You looked for the scam every time. So guys, yeah. Hold on, hold on. You'd get excited about a scam. You wouldn't get excited about a job opportunity. And then you're like, oh my God, why is he successful? And I'm not successful. Because one guy worked at a legitimate operation and you decided, how am I going to scam people? And then you see how the universe works. The universe spent its whole life scamming the fuck out of yep. you in return. <laughs> you got boomeranged. You, you, I'm not you, even going to uh, say anything. <laughs> You reap what you sow. You reap what day, you man. sow. You were trying to the whole time. You were trying to yeah. sow scams, and then the universe is like, "I got to scam." Just admit you, it. Bitch ass. Just admit it. You want people to just hand you things. You do. You love that shit. I don't know why you guys have that thought pattern. Well, we don't know why we, we don't have know that why. thought pattern. I've only tried There's to commit. There's a series of evidence. <laughs> I've only tried to commit a thousand scams in my yeah. lifetime because I want to take things from people. I don't know why you guys would assume I want people to just hand me shit. Yeah, I don't want them to hand to me. I want to take. It. <laughs> I want to take it All from right, him. you know what? I wasn't going to say anything, but it's important you understand my train of thought. Yes. My father had a company, and oh I'm not, God. believe me, I've had so many arguments with so many people. I understand because about a dozen people have all told me, Adam, your father passed away. Fine. I had him as the source of my success. Okay? Yes. You were handed stuff. All right. The only thing I did, and I will admit, okay, listeners, I will admit this. I didn't see in time that, number one, his company is being audited and they're in big financial trouble. And number two, my father's health level is going down the drain fast and that I need to get out of this before and not after the, the, the danger came. Because okay. you were busy sowing scams. Anyways, we're going to get to the top five and a half yeah. list because I got to bounce. Oh, yeah. You guys do have yeah. a top five and a half. Dance, Adam. Dance. P bro, p <laughs> pull your chest hair out and dance. Yeah, let's bro. see that. Let's oh, see that. Chesty. <laughs> oh, all the way down, all the way down, all the way down. Baby boy. Yeah, dance, dance. Chest, chest, <laughs> Adam, chest, <laughs> chest, <laughs> chest. Yeah, yeah this another is not one. Yeah. not a dance show. I keep saying this. <laughs> tits, tits, chest, tits, chest. Okay. This week's top five and a half favorite meals. This was uh, the idea of Adam. Number five, classic pizza. I think pizza deserves to be on this list. Not it is a classic food. It is. But but it has it cannot be too high up there because it's too easy for it to be high up there. But based on how versatile and iconic it is, it must be on this list. Yeah. Simple. It made us like Italians. Yeah. And I, I don't think they even invented it. Does anybody know how long pizza's existed as a food? Well, it depends. There's different versions. Like the, there's the Americanized, the one that we all know now. But there was also pizzas back in the old country in Italy. There was also pizza in Greece back in the day, tomato sauce, and uh, so it's been around in many variations for thousands yeah. of years. Oh wow! People love like bread, sauce, and meat and cheese. We love that shit. It's it's a combination to die for. It's so good. Thanks for the answer. <laughs> Number four, a classic steak. Just delicious, sometimes a little bloody, a little fatty. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I hadn't eaten a steak in a while, like a T-bone steak, and I ate one like uh, Friday. And uh, man, there's nothing like a good old steak. Medium. Ooh, medium is perfect, I medium find. Medium, I like. Medium. I used to get medium rare, and yeah. I'm going more towards medium in my old Medium age. is perfect. I think you get just um, the perfect amount of pink, yeah. uh, like uh, uh, chewiness and uh, meltiness. Yeah. It's it's I feel like it's right in the middle, perfect. Anything, I could even eat a medium rare, but I prefer medium now. But yeah. if you bring it to me medium rare, I won't complain. I'll eat I it. I used to eat steaks for the longest time. Uh, well done, because of my mother. Because yeah, don't my mom too. No, then, I can't. And then I finally became an adult, and yeah, and then I was like, oh my god, this is what it's supposed to taste like. Yeah. <laughs> I used to have. To... Yeah, yeah, exactly. Just chewing it, it's hard. Chewing for thirty minutes. She's like, why can't you just swallow it? <laughs> I'm like. Why can't you swallow the charcoal? Somebody said that about... Oh, no, I'm not going to say yeah. it. Somebody asked that about me. Yeah, like, why can't you just swallow it? And you're like, Mom, I would have asked you the same fucking question. <laughs> why can't you just swallow it so I don't have to be bored? <laughs> I hate my life with this dry steak. Oh, God. Yeah, so All steak. Right. Classic steak, Adam. Yeah. Good choice. This one I'm very mad at because it was Adam's decision. 
<laughs> General Tao Chicken. Yum, yum, yum. I don't know why this is on the list. This is it, not. It is classic. People love a good General Tao. Adam's not wrong. Yeah, but it's not. I feel like it's not that good to. It's iconic. You guys are going to laugh, but I, there's actually General Tao. In Tau New York, they call it General Tao. You know have. how General Tao was invented, right? I think it was uh, it was like during a battle, and General Tao was like, "Fuck, I gotta feed my troops," and he threw around. <laughs> He's calling out my bullshit. No, it's complete you guys fabrication. Hear what I said, it by is the way? fabrication. There's a, there's a General Tao poutine, and they sell it at the casino. It's really good. It's like 13, 14 bucks. You would know. Stay away from the fucking casino. <laughs> Stay away from the casino. That's number one. Number two, it's <laughs> called General Tao in New York, I believe. Oh wow! Really? Huh. Okay. Next. Next. Numero de lasagna and or pastizio. Yes. So the reason why I think lasagna is iconic is because it combines pasta. Yes. And pizza. Yes. And it's layered. Yeah. And lasagna, let's be honest right here. Delish. Yeah. And it combines, I feel like it combines both plates, like both assets, both you know what I mean? Because you get that pizza. Like some lasagna, if you make it right, it kind of tastes like pizza. And there's also some health ver versions of it. Healthier versions of it. Yeah. Look, if we're being Vegetable honest, none of this shit is healthy, but it's so good. Uh, depends where you eat it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No. no. No, it's all garbage. Okay. This one's this one's iconic. Uh-oh. Number one. <laughs> Fried chicken, mon frere. So the reason why fried chicken is number one is because... We do appeal to a black audience. That too. But also there have never... Like there's entire chains and businesses that have been built around fried just chicken. fried chicken. Like yeah. KFC. Yeah. KFC. I don't know why you're laughing, dude. Fried chicken yeah. is the shit. If you say, I don't know what people see in fried chicken, you're a liar and or a vegan. I used to hate fried chicken as a child because of the visual. I, if How about it, chicken getting fried? No, no, it looked it looked weird to me. The the bumps and everything. I was like, what the fuck is this? The, bro, the skin of fried skin? chicken is delicious. And then the you first, ever have KFC fried chicken skin? Bro, the first time I tried KFC fried chicken, bro, I think I was on my grandmother's house. I, I think I almost stabbed my cousins to have more. Bro, I I haven't eaten in years because I can't eat that shit anymore. I'm not allowed. But the uh, the skin, I'm, I'm thinking allowed. about it right now. Oh. Just the taste and the and the juiciness and the I'm getting horny. I, you, sorry, I mean hungry, hungry, and hungry. You, hungry. And, and you take a bite and then there's a crunchy oh. part. And then there's a, and then even and the chicken crunch. itself, that breast, mm, 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 and that it's so white tender meat. and juicy. Oh. Eh? oh, and it's horrible. It's horrible chicken with fucking steroids. It's terrible for you. I, by the way, figured out how to make really juicy chicken in the air fryer, and I'm very proud of myself. So 18 minutes, okay. Halfway through, you turn it over. And the secret lies in putting oil and butter. So double the bad for your arteries. So you put yeah, olive yeah. oil and butter, and then the butter melts. And then when it comes out, it's so succulent and juicy. Oh, yeah. And when you cut, it cuts like butter, bro. Like you go, shh, and it cuts right through. And then you eat it, and it's delicious. How Air fryer, 18 minutes. A uh, 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 thin coating of olive oil. You're, he's thinking of something else, bro. No, I'm listening. No. Oh. Uh, I'm not thin much of a thin cook. coating of olive oil. You throw a bit of butter, a bit of butter on top. Throw it in. Halfway through, flip that bitch over. So wait a second. You didn't like it when you were a kid. Now you do. Fried chicken. Yeah. Well, no, it. I liked it as a kid too, but I didn't like it as when a kid. When he first saw it, yeah. he he didn't like the visual of the it. Stigmatism, yeah. whatever you want to call it. Yeah, the stigmatism. He didn't want to be called what? a fried chicken lover. <laughs> you don't know the word stigmatism. Yeah, I don't want to associate. <laughs> I don't associate with these fried chickens. <laughs> <laughs> Only baked chickens in this house. Yeah. I'll boil a chicken before I fucking fry it. <laughs> uh, something I loved as a kid was fries, and something I grew to hate is fries. As an, I can't like I have a hard time eating just fries like that. With even with ketchup, like I don't like it that much mm. for some reason. But you don't like onion in, rings either. I love onion oh. rings. <laughs> he loves deep fried shit. Yeah. All right, and the half. And the half. And the half. The death row last meal, which doesn't make any sense because that's you're not saying what the meal is. I don't know. I was just trying to throw in a half that didn't make any sense. Uh, of course. Uh, that's it. That's the top five and a half. And I think we're going to close uh, on this.